Hey everybody, Andrew TV here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Thornhill Zoo. I don't know why I did it like that. I just, I'm excited today. You ever get a day like that where you're just like, yeah, today's an exciting day. Cause yeah. Anyways, yeah, welcome back to Planet Zoo. And uh, yeah, here in Thornton, <laughs> I don't know. I'm all over the place today. Here in Thornton Hill Zoo, we are picking back up in our North American section. The North American Passage, as it's called. Um, I don't know if I mentioned that in our last video there, but uh, yeah, it's called the North American Passage. But uh, quickly, I have to mention what's going on because there's a lot that's uh, not really changed, but I did uh, redo some stuff that um, I didn't do on camera. I went ahead and uh, some people commented on uh, um, kind of the, uh, the canal way that we had going on there with the boats and everything like that. And I kind of mentioned in the last video how it was kind of giving me a little bit of huh, a little bit of an issue there a little bit. Uh, so I just went ahead and um, I redid the whole thing. I flattened out the, I took out the water, I flattened out the terrain, um, and I kind of spray painted beforehand. I don't know if any of you do this, but um, for, maybe for those of you that are uh, having some design uh, issues or just like kind of uh, questioning how some of us do our uh, design work, uh, for this area what I uh, did the second time around is I uh, went ahead and took the terrain brush and I measured it, uh, you know, I got the radius correct that I wanted to do, and I went ahead and just uh, paint it. I painted the uh, area out that I wanted to uh, do it and uh, that got my scale a lot better. It's not as, uh, um, I don't even know how to put it. It's just, it's just better. <laughs> it's just better scaled and everything like that. So, um, but yeah, again, I didn't film that um, at all uh, just because we'd already had a whole entire episode on it. And if you look at it at first glance, it looks exactly the same. Um, but again, just uh, kind of mess with the uh, the scaling of it and all that kind of fun stuff there. So, uh, but what we're working on here is our entrance way uh, into the uh, kind of, I guess you would say the uh, canal area or where the uh, the boats go or towards the second boat dock and stuff like that there. So uh, kind of labeling this area the Great Plains and um, definitely modeling it after, you know, the Great Plains in the uh, the United States there. And I used to live in an area that would be considered the Great Plains, which was uh, Denver, Colorado. And if you're not familiar with it, it's just kind of wide open areas of you know grasslands and uh, stuff like that and like you know bison with a uh, roman and our pronghorn and stuff like that that's going to be uh, one of our habitats with the bison and pronghorn that's going to kind of simulate kind of a uh, uh the prairie and everything like that there so or the great plains so um but yeah they're just kind of uh making this little area into uh the first bridge they're going to be modeled after the great plains and using this uh really cool yellow flower i think it's for the north american section if you could type uh, or tag uh, uh north american flowers and stuff like that I'm pretty sure this uh, uh, flower comes up the yellow one, but um, I, I don't really see it as, I mean, I still use it as a flower, sure, but I kind of see it as uh, this kind of long wheat grass we have. I'm not like a botanist, I don't know the technical names for them or anything, but here in uh, Illinois, at least, uh, where I'm living now, and uh, even back in uh, Denver where I was living, uh, in these big, vast, open plains, uh, you would see just this really tall, um, I guess, just wheat grass, where it's just really tall grass that would grow up to, I mean, I'm like 6'2", six 6'3", six and it would grow up to like my waist, at, at least, in uh, kind of natural prairies and natural plains and stuff like that. So, kind of use this uh, yellow grass to kind of simulate that, and um, yeah, I think it turns out pretty well there. So, um, my intention with this was to, since I started over here, my intention was was to kind of go over the bridge area and go towards the island and kind of start working on um, our whole bison area with the pronghorns and stuff like that because I really want to get that going. Um, but <laughs> it wouldn't be a uh, Beyond Drew TV episode without me getting super distracted and totally not even a little bit uh, building over there. So uh, this is the start of the distraction right here. Um, yeah, building this fence here. And uh, this fence really simple to use. And I actually I saw this on a social media. I think it was on Facebook on uh, one of the Planet Zoo community uh, Facebook pages where uh, someone mentioned that we don't have that many fences in game. And um, I do agree that the default fencing in the game, sure, we don't have that much. But if you all don't know, um, you can build your own fencing. And that's what I did right there using just some of the uh, the planks and uh, uh, some of the natural wood and stuff like that. You can uh, go ahead and, you know, build your own fencing. Now, um, you know, it's sure that's not something that comes naturally to a lot of people. But if you go on the workshop, and I've actually done this, uh, there's a member on Bro Nation named uh, Carlos, I believe their name is. Uh, they've been posting a lot of fantastic stuff. And they made a fence uh, set on the workshop. So, uh, you know, if you go on there and type in fencing or um, barriers or something like that, you know, you'll find a lot of people have... Uh, uploaded custom fences um, so if you're kind of getting uh, tired of the same old same old fencing uh, in the game either a you know you can look up your own uh, you know fencing or maybe you have an idea in your head that you want to make out of the uh, you know Lego pieces or construction pieces that we have in the game or again be going this uh, steam workshop 
Seam Workshop's really, really handy uh, for many reasons uh, for this kind of game, especially for you know for those of you that um, you don't you know blah, 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 blah. you don't want to dive there. It is you don't want to dive into the creative aspect so much. And you just kind of want to you know plop some stuff down and then kind of focus on the animals. Um, people like myself and others again have made awesome items on the uh, workshop for you to just kind of download and plop on into your zoos there. So speaking of the workshop, by the way, um, I kind of mention this all the time on my habitat build videos. If you're not watching my hab my one-off habitat build videos, I uh, definitely recommend. Uh, catching those. Those are a lot of fun to do. I uh, kind of do some more, uh, I wouldn't say outlandish, but kind of go a little bit more uh, theming and uh, stuff like that um, in comparison to uh, Thornton Hills Zoo here. Kind of just uh, go all out. Don't give myself a budget or anything like we do uh, here with Thornton Hills Zoo. And um, all those habitats, uh, I put those up on the Seam Workshop, and I've even put some items from uh, Thornton Hills Zoo here uh, up on the uh, the workshop there. So uh, if, yeah, if you want to um, you know check that out, you could probably find me, but I don't know how this Steam Workshop even works anymore. It's it's so, it. <laughs> I feel like they haven't updated it in forever. Um, but if you search for me, you know, Beyond Drew TV on there, hopefully I'll come up. Um, but uh, you know, otherwise, but yeah. Uh, so there's that there. If you want to search me out there. So um, going back onto the point of the distraction, yeah, I was gonna build the bison and uh, pronghorn big plains prairie habitat area um, just across the way from here. But again, got a little distracted and just kind of started doing some rock work. And that is a lot of this episode because we go ahead and start um, building this. Uh, habitat the habitat behind us is our timber wolf habitat there so I um, really wanted to make this uh, really kind of themed out and have a uh, kind of higher budget than what we've done in the past um, I kind of mentioned this before that this is a newer or probably the, it might be the newest section of the zoo to be honest with you as far as like the master plan of the zoo would go um, I feel like this would be probably the newest thing to be added on and then uh, like like we talked about in the past episodes then they might be moving down towards the uh, the big uh, the hooved animals area and the some of those old historic buildings and stuff like that just below this area of the zoo there so um, that being said this is uh, yeah the newest and the most up-to-date I guess you'd say so we kind of got to go a little bit more uh, not crazy but you know, <laughs> just kind of got to uh, theme up a little bit more here and uh, yeah you can see that we're doing some really a elaborate rock work. Now this rock work would be probably most of it um, fake. Uh, I don't, uh, the zoo's natural uh, terrain and stuff like that would not have all this uh, rock work there. So um, it's kind of hard to simulate it a little bit, but uh, a way that I try and do it, uh, simulate the meaning like their fake rock work, because the rocks look so great in the game that um, if you want to do that kind of fake plasticky, you know, plaster kind of molding kind of look to it, um, it's, it's almost a challenge to do so. Um, what I found to do is uh, we might see a little bit here as I build the den up and stuff like that uh, later on is uh, I like to keep some of the uh, rock faces or the cliff faces very similar uh, so I don't rotate rocks around and I kind of make them look very similar in their texture and stuff like that and that kind of almost gives it a artificial feel to it a little bit like something's just not quite right with it you know what I mean so um, while the rock work that uh, a lot of zoos and theme parks do look really you know amazing look at Galaxy's Edge you know Star Wars and stuff like that the rock work there looks uh, pretty realistic um, I just still wanted to give the sense that you know um, the rock work that you're seeing isn't fully real. It's probably, you know, man-made a little bit. So that was my kind of one-off to try and do that there. So moving on here, I think this is going to be the third or fourth episode that I'm going to mention him. But thanks again to Mr. Domez. And I promise I'm not paying him or he's not paying me or anything to mention him in, uh, yeah, there it is. He's not paying me to mention him in this, these videos, but he, he keeps making amazing items to use so <laughs> i'm gonna keep mentioning them um if he does it so it was real quick there but we have this uh you know our backstage building where our wolves would kind of have their vet area and our uh, keepers would have their um kind of area back there and stuff but um if you saw it real quick there there was a uh, on top of the building there was an aircon uh, whole unit and stuff like that and uh, some backstage items with uh, um some uh pallets and uh, barrels and other things like that. just random junk I guess you'd say um, again that's from Mr. Domez he has made that up from the pieces in the game uh, so if you are interested in any of that um, I've linked it in a few of the videos there but definitely go check out his uh, Steam Workshop uh, items and stuff like that if you're into kind of adding that random clutter and all that kind of you know uh, realism kind of backstage kind of stuff there so uh, here we are I was talking about earlier uh, talking about the den there so this is our entrance to our den and uh, eventually we're going to kind of enclose this entire entire area here. And this is all surrounded by one-way glass, and uh, we're trying to make this uh, a little bit more realistic for the one-way glass. Um, I know a lot of people just kind of throw uh, one-way glass out, you know, just 
kind of willy-nilly, I guess you'd say. And I think myself and others have mentioned it um, in their videos, but that's not really how one-way glass works. Uh, it's kind of a finicky process. Uh, if you've seen bad one-way glass, and I've seen it at, um, oh, I can't even remember. It was some little rink-a-dink museum up in uh, Wisconsin. Anyways, um, if you see bad one-way glass, you know when it's bad because it kind of seeps through and kind of bleeds through and doesn't really work right if it's not dark enough. Um, and that's the whole thing is that uh, one-way glass works the best or at all, basically, if there's uh, the lighting has to be correct. It has to be a certain kind of darkness and um, all this fun stuff. So. Oh my god, if you're kind of focusing on that, you know, the super realism or trying to get that at least, uh, um, if you're doing one leg glass, do make sure to, it's, you know, indoors or kind of covered up and stuff like that to kind of reduce the lighting there. But that's what we do here. We're making a giant um, uh, indoor den for our guests to kind of walk down into um, to kind of see our wolves taking a nap and sleeping and stuff like that. So did something similar in Thornton Zoo. I almost called it Thornton Hills Zoo, but just Thornton Zoo in the beta. So if you watched the beta, it was one of the, it was probably like the last video I did right before the the zoo tour and uh, stuff like that because we only had the two weeks to play it then so I had to kind of rush through everything but um, anyways I wanted to take that idea and kind of expand on it a little bit further uh, this overall concept uh, for this round, I didn't fully um, mask it after it, but the original Thornton Zoo uh, wolf den that I did was uh, masked after, or recreated after the uh, Brookfield Zoo uh, timber wolves um, habitat. So kind of doing that a little bit here and there, um, but overall uh, just kind of just doing that den feel. So um, again, just to reiterate, kind of doing the same thing, but just kind of uh, switching it up just a little bit, I guess, making it a lot bigger. Um, I wanted the wolves to go back in here and hang out a, uh, you know, a lot more than just um, every once in a while. I want this to be their main area to kind of hang out so guests would get really good views and uh, uh, they definitely do by the end of it the, this is definitely um, an area where the uh, the Timberwolves hang out a lot there and uh, starting with our Timberwolves we're uh, we're doing a clean start with them so uh, that meaning I can't remember if I mentioned I might have mentioned this in the last episode but either way um, meaning that we're starting with just two so we have a alpha male and an alpha female Neither of them are named, so if anyone would like to uh, name the, uh, you know, the Timberwolves or anything like that, we can go ahead and do that. Um, and uh, yeah, we're just gonna start with those two and try and get a legit pack going. I know that um, some people have had some issues with, uh, you know, getting actual packs working in the game, um, and they have a lot of like, you know, fighting between family members and stuff like that. I do believe that Frontier has stated there's a big patch coming out next week. So hopefully just a few days from recording this. I'm just gonna address a lot of sandbox and uh, animal welfare and just a lot of issues like that. So hopefully we can actually get that kind of stuff working. Cause I think it'd be really fun to, you know, as the zoo starts to fill out, we can kind of watch our family or our family, our uh, animal families. Yeah, just our, our animal um, family trees and stuff like that and keep track of them and stuff and all that fun stuff. Cause I, I have went ahead and um, I didn't originally, but um, I went ahead and turned on the, uh, the animal breeding and death and stuff like that. The only thing I turned off I think was the the ability for the staff to quit. That's the only thing that I turned off. Everything else, um, I went ahead and turned back on because it was kind of, you know, fun not having to think about messing with the animals and, uh, you know, all that. But um, the, you know, the wolves weren't getting any more, uh, you know, weren't getting any pups or anything like that. And I really wanted them to kind of, you know, start their family tree, their family line and stuff. So I went and turned back, that back on. And right when I did, the flamingos popped out like four babies. So apparently they had been getting down to business and we're, <laughs> we're just waiting for me to kind of tick that button there. But yeah, so the, uh, the flamingos are filling out and, uh, you know, all that fun stuff. And the, um, um, I don't get it recorded, unfortunately here but the uh, the Timberwolves as well they uh, they get two cubs they get two little female um, cubs or pups is what I meant uh, they get two female pups uh, by the end of the video so um, or not the video because I again I unfortunately didn't get it recorded but um, so yeah just uh, kind of turned on some more management functions there but uh, and again talking about the little uh, patch there if y'all did not hear just to reiterate Frontier, uh, I think it was Bo on the official forums for Planet Zoo, uh, did mention that there is going to be a pretty big update uh, next week. We did get one this week, but it was just addressing like I think one really specific franchise mode issue with some uh, animals or something like that. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, next week we will be getting the, I think 1.0.3? Ooh, question mark uh, or four uh, update and yeah she said it's gonna address a lot of sandbox issues that people have been um, you know requesting as far as like uh, turning off management and animal welfare I think and stuff like that so we'll see what that addresses I'm excited for that and um, it sounds like it's gonna fix a lot of other things too so for those of you that have been kind of you know patiently I know franchise mode and other modes have been kind of giving some people some headaches some trouble there um, it sounds like your patience is gonna pay off because we're gonna keep getting more updates so there you go but overall that pretty well wraps up the 
video. Um, I didn't get everything kind of recorded. Uh, I forgot to hit uh, record on the uh, my last little bit of uh, building inside here, but you saw um, everything in the cinematics there. We just kind of add um, from the landscape here, we add in a little stream uh, towards the guest viewing, and that is it um, after that. So yeah, that's gonna do it for the build here. Uh, next up, we're gonna go ahead and maybe focus on the bison and pronghorn or or wild card animal coming at you we might focus on a grizzly bear ha ha so yeah we'll see what we will focus on next though but hey uh thanks so much everyone for hanging out i always do appreciate it and until the next episode of thornton hill zoo stay wild yeah i haven't done a stay wild since beta man i have to keep bringing stay wild out <laughs> anyways have a good one bye